Paleobotany, Wikipedia article audio. Paleobotany, also spelled as paleobotany, is the branch of paleontology or paleobiology dealing with the recovery and identification of plant remains from geological contexts, and their use for the biological reconstruction of past environments, and both the evolutionary history of plants with a bearing upon the evolution of life in general. A synonym is paleophytology. Paleobotany includes the study of terrestrial plant fossils, as well as the study of prehistoric marine photoautotrophs, such as photosynthetic algae, seaweeds, or kelp. A closely related field is palynology, which is the study of fossilized and extant spores and pollen. Overview of the Paleobotanical Record Plant Fossils Preservation of Plant Fossils Fossil Taxa Fossil Groups of Plants Notable Paleobotanists Paleobotany is important in the reconstruction of ancient ecological systems and climate known as paleoecology and paleoclimatology respectively, and is fundamental to the study of green plant development and evolution. Paleobotany has also become important to the field of archaeology, primarily for the use of phytoliths in relative dating and in paleoethnobotany. The emergence of paleobotany as a scientific discipline can be seen in the early 19th century especially in the works of the German paleontologist Ernst Friedrich von Schlatheum, the Czech nobleman and scholar Caspar Maria von Sternberg, and the French botanist Adolphe Theodore Brongniart. Macroscopic remains of true vascular plants are first found in the fossil record during the Silurian period of the Paleozoic era. Some dispersed Fragmentary fossils of disputed affinity, primarily spores and cuticles, have been found in rocks from the Ordovician period in Oman, and are thought to derive from liverwort, or moss-grade fossil plants. An important early land plant fossil locality is the Rini Chert, found outside the village of Rini in Scotland. The Rini Chert is an early Devonian sinter deposit composed primarily of silica. It is exceptional due to its preservation of several different clades of plants, from mosses and lycopods to more unusual, problematic forms. Many fossil animals, including arthropods and arachnids, are also found in the Rini Chert, and it offers a unique window on the history of early terrestrial life. Plant-derived macrofossils become abundant in the late Devonian and include tree trunks, fronds, and roots. The earliest tree was thought to be Archaeopteris, which bears simple, fern-like leaves spirally arranged on branches atop a conifer-like trunk, though it is now known to be the recently discovered Wadi Za. Widespread coal swamp deposits across North America and Europe during the Carboniferous period contain a wealth of fossils containing arborescent lycopods up to 30 meters tall, abundant seed plants, such as conifers and seed ferns, and countless smaller, herbaceous plants. Angiosperms evolved during the Mesozoic and flowering plant pollen and leaves first appear during the early Cretaceous, approximately 130 million years ago. A plant fossil is any preserved part of a plant that has long since died. Such fossils may be prehistoric impressions that are many millions of years old, or bits of charcoal that are only a few hundred years old. Prehistoric plants are various groups of plants that lived before recorded history. Plant fossils can be preserved in a variety of ways, each of which can give different types of information about the original parent plant. These modes of preservation are discussed in the general pages on fossils but may be summarized in a paleobotanical context as follows. 
Plant fossils almost always represent disarticulated parts of plants, even small herbaceous plants are rarely preserved whole. Those few examples of plant fossils that appear to be the remains of whole plants in fact are incomplete as the internal cellular tissue and fine micromorphological detail is normally lost during fossilization. Plant remains can be preserved in a variety of ways, each revealing different features of the original parent plant. Because of these difficulties, Paleobotanists usually assign different taxonomic names to different parts of the plant in different modes of preservation. For instance, in the subarborescent Paleozoic sphenophytes, an impression of a leaf might be assigned to the genus Anolaria, a compression of a cone assigned to Paleostachia, and the stem assigned to either Colomites or Arthrosylon depending on whether it is preserved as a cast or a petrifaction. All of these fossils may have originated from the same parent plant but they are each given their own taxonomic name. This approach to naming plant fossils originated with the work of Alexander Brongniart and has stood the test of time. For many years this approach to naming plant fossils was accepted by paleobotanists but not formalized within the international rules of botanical nomenclature. Eventually, Thomas and Zhang Mans, Halley and Gothen proposed a set of formal provisions, the essence of which was introduced into the 1952 International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. These early provisions allowed fossils representing particular parts of plants in a particular state of preservation to be referred to organ genera. In addition, a small subset of organ genera, to be known as form genera, were recognized based on the artificial taxa introduced by Brongniart mainly for foliage fossils. Over the years, the concepts and regulations surrounding organ and form genera became modified within successive codes of nomenclature, reflecting a failure of the paleobotanical community to agree on how this aspect of plant taxonomic nomenclature should work. The use of organ and fossil genera was abandoned with the St. Louis Code, replaced by Morphotaxa. The situation in the Vienna Code of 2005 was that any plant taxon whose type is a fossil, except diatoms, can be described as a morphotaxon, a particular part of a plant preserved in a particular way. Although the name is always fixed to the type specimen, the circumscription is defined by the taxonomist who uses the name. Such a change in circumscription could result in an expansion of the range of plant parts and slash or preservation states that can be incorporated within the taxon. For instance, a fossil genus originally based on compressions of ovules could be used to include the multi-ovulate cupules within which the ovules were originally born. A complication can arise if, in this case, there was an already named fossil genus for these cupules. If paleobotanists were confident that the type of the ovule fossil genus and of the cupule fossil genus could be included in the same genus, then the two names would compete as to being the correct one for the newly amended genus. Morphotaxa were introduced to try to overcome the issue of competing names that represented different plant parts and slash or preservation states. What would you do if the species name of a pollen organ was predated by the species name of the type of pollen produced by that pollen organ? It was argued that paleobotanists would be unhappy if the pollen organs were named using the taxonomic name whose type specimen is a pollen grain. As pointed out by Cleel and Thomas, however, the risk of the name of a pollen grain supplanting the name of a pollen organ is most unlikely. Paleobotanists would have to be totally confident that the type specimen of the pollen species, which would normally be a dispersed grain, definitely came from the same plant that produced the pollen organ. 
We know from modern plants that closely related but distinct species can produce virtually indistinguishable pollen. It would seem that morphotaxa offer no real advantage to paleobotanists over normal fossil taxa and the concept was abandoned with the 2011 Botanical Congress and the 2012 International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi, and Plants. Some plants have remained remarkably unchanged throughout Earth's geological time scale. Early ferns had developed by the Mississippian, conifers by the Pennsylvanian. Some plants of prehistory are the same ones around today and are thus living fossils, such as Ginkgo biloba and Cyatopides verticillata. Other plants have changed radically, or have gone extinct entirely. Examples of prehistoric plants are Arocaria mirabilis, Archaeopteris, Colomites, Dilhoffia, Glossopteris, Hymenia protera, Nalumbo area vallis, Pacopteris, Paleo raphi, Peltondra primava, Protosalvania, Trochodendron nasty.